Hi, I'm Nigel Griffiths, and we're looking in this Power9 S924 video what you need to know about system software. In fact, number one, we're looking at the software running on your hardware management console. To control a Power9 machine, you must be running the HMC software 910. You can upgrade your current CR7, CR8, or CR9. Quick note there that if you're currently running the 870, the latest version for the Power8 machines, that will control Power6, 7, and 8, but not Power9 machines. If you upgrade to the 910 version of of the software on your HMC, then that will let you control Power 7, 8, and 9, but not the older Power 6 machine. Fact number two is we have new HMC hardware that came out at the end of 2017. So if you're getting a new HMC for your new Power 9s, this is what we'd recommend. 7063CR1, and it's based on the Power 8 processor, which is really nice because we have more CPUs, memory, and disk, and it's slightly less expensive, so there's absolutely no reason for not taking it. It's actually easier to operate too. Fact number three, PowerVM Enterprise edition is included with the price of the hardware at no cost. You will still need to purchase the software maintenance for PowerVM. Key features of that, I think we all know these, but LPARs, VO servers, live partition mobility, key piece of software for keeping your applications running, even if you have to take the machine down. Remote restarts and shared storage ball. Fact number four, for PowerVM, two special cases. One is that some people really don't want Power VM it tends to be single dedicated smaller machines running IBM I with a single application in it. We have a mechanism for sorting that out inside IBM. The other one is LPM. We can permanently disable this option. And you think, why would you want to do that? Well, there's some software vendors, namely Oracle, that will try and charge you double the number of licenses if you find uh, LPM is available. So we can switch that off permanently with a VET code on your HMC. Fact number five is PowerVC is default included into the configuration of these new scale-out servers. Lots of features and functions in here. It's OpenStack with additions so you can control all the fancy features of your power machines and uh, virtual machines. Of course, if you really don't want to do this uh, or try this piece of software, then make sure it's not in your configuration. Fact number six is PowerSE standard edition. This is included by default again in your configuration. Lots of Good tools in here, in particular real time alert for AIX, very quick to get running, very quick to let you know if somebody's fiddling on your box. And the uh, trusted firewall is actually a performance tweak, it actually lets your machines run faster. Fact number seven AIX and IBM I, the very latest versions. Uh, support Power9 from day one. Some advanced features of the processor will have to wait for the upgrades of the operating systems for full support. Now the older versions of AIX, IBM I and uh, Linux, uh, they will still be supported in Power8 mode on the Power9 processor and you still get the full performance benefits of the Power9 processor. The Linux distros have their own release cycles and so for Ubuntu, SUSE and Red Hat we'll have to wait for those to come round before we get the full Power9 support but they've all signed up to support Power9. You may not have noticed but Power9 has no internal DVD. DVD is a pretty old technology, mechanical and unreliable and pretty slow too. So for installing your operating systems in the VO server you've moved on now, fully supporting the USB memory key or thumb drive, whatever you want to call it, go for the 3.0 version. What I found from my experience that's about three times faster. Uh, copy your ISO image to your memory key and boot up from it. Of course HMC and network install still works fine too if that's where you want to do it. IBM does supply an external USB DVD drive. One warning, do plug your DVD the drives into the sockets at the front of the machine, not the ones around the back. So here's my list of the system software summary. Pause the video if you want to capture or read those. What's the take home I want to leave with you? Well, we have all the power system core strengths available in this new range of power line servers. We have this new faster processor, larger memory, lots and lots of disk options and really fast adapters. If you've got workloads running on power 7 at rate, well, you could just migrate those over right now and get the benefits of your power 9 machine. We also had really good timing here because the uh, the standards for the DDR4 and the PCI Gen 4 were just available a few months before we released, so we could pick those up and get a great deal of future proofing in these new machines. Well, that's it for the end of this five-part series. It's been good fun, very difficult squeezing all the facts down into the minimum amount of time. Don't forget, give us some thumbs up, subscribe, or give us some comments. Only if we can prove that people are watching this can I do the same next time round. Until then, goodbye.